So let's see what else we can do. In the Page Builder Toolkit, in the Page Builder Toolkit, notice that there's a button to delete the current page, this one, right? In case you start with a sample report that has more pages than you need. If you especially like a page that you've created, we'll find it useful to save it for future use. You can do that with this button, Save Current Page. Where is it? Save uh, There it is, Save Current Page. This one, you type in a description for it and click OK and then it would be available in, in it would be available to select here where this one says insert saved pages either in this or another report you can also lock a page see the lock right there you can lock a page as I mentioned earlier so it can't be changed later without unlocking it individual pages may be locked and unlocked without a pass password if your report has multiple pages, you can move the current page right or left, as we did earlier, move to the left, move to the right. Just above these buttons, we have a few others. The one with the hammer we saw earlier is Report Properties. This time, notice that you may lock or unlock an entire report. Report locked false, we'll change that to true. And if I change it to true, now that means that I can protect it with a pass excuse me, with the password, um, when I lock it, and this prevents changes from being made to any existing pages, but pages may still be added to the report. And then again, we can protect it with a passport, password. So if you, when you lock a page only, you don't need a password to unlock it. But if you lock the entire report, It asks you for a password. Now, if you decide to do this, you need to remember your password because if you forget it, we won't be able to tell you what it is. If you want to save the report as a new existing report for selection later in other projects, then I can do that by clicking on the Save Report button, this one. I would give it a name and perhaps a description. And then I, when I click OK, it gets added to the list, this list down here for me to select in, um, in future projects following the same guidelines that I had set up here. It would include a master page if I would created one and any other pages that I put into the report. Now I want to point out that if your newly saved existing report has views from model mode with special names, your next project would need to have those same view names if you want them to be automatically included in the report. For example, this report has a viewport that, can, that contains two views from model mode with the names view underscore one and close up view. If I want a view in my next project to be included in the report automatically, it needs to have one of those names. So generic view names are a good idea. And remember, if a view comes into the report that isn't what you wanted, just edit it right click on it and select properties and then make it the one that you do want. Now what about sharing your saved page builder report with someone else? Page builder reports including the original existing reports named as the various sample reports that you saw and any that you've created and saved with the save report button can all be found on your C drive in a folder whose name was given in the PowerPoint handout on slide 15 which is just a couple of slides ago. I mentioned that remember in the fifth bullet program data backslash AGI32 backslash page builder reports. You can most easily get to that location by clicking on system settings button up here and then on file system tab click on this program data button and that takes you directly to that folder via Windows Explorer. The page builder reports folder is here. There it is. Yes. I'm definitely blind. Page Builder Reports. Okay, so now the reports here are all listed as PBR files for Page Builder Report and can be copied from this location and shared with other people with AGI32 who might want to use them. I'm going to cancel out of all of that. How about outputting the report as a PDF? If you have a PDF writer on your computer such as Adobe PDF or Qt PDF, you can simply click on the print button Select Print Setup, select the appropriate PDF writer as your printer, right, depending on what you have on there. Be sure to select the correct paper size 
for your report and the correct orientation for your report, even though you're saving it as a PDF. That way it will print properly when you send it to an actual printer or plotter. If you have more than one paper size, as we do, you might want to select the individual pages and paper sizes accordingly to print one at a time. Alternatively, whether printing to paper or to PDF, if you need to, you can print something meant for larger paper on smaller size paper. That's kind of what we have selected here. It will take multiple pages, of course, and so in print setup, I have letter size paper here and landscape. So when I click OK, then it shows me here how many pages it's going to take. It says I have two number of pages selected as two my big sheet and my small sheet, and it's going to take 13 pieces of paper to print it. I can select print preview to see how that's going to look, right? So that's page one, the big sheet printed onto eight and a half by 11 many times, and there's the second one, more normal. So once you click print here or OK here, then it sends it to your printer or to your PDF writer. Simple as that. In the help topics that come to, come with AGI 32, there's a lot of good information in Page Builder. Help, Contents and Index, Page Builder, right there. Whole bunch of topics, and then special topics on viewports and image ports, right? So lots of good information.